This chapter is devoted to solving a whole lot of linear systems, like this one. But we won't use Gaussian elimination for any of them. We won't have to. I'll handpick the systems to make sure they're simple enough that the solution can be determined simply by visual inspection. I believe it's much more important to know what the solution should look like and its structure than knowing how to manipulate numbers to get the solutions. That part will be very easy and it'll come later, but in this chapter we'll concentrate on simple systems so we can get used to what solutions look like. So first I'd like to introduce some terminology. Most of it is already familiar. The first term is the column space. When we rewrite our linear systems in decomposition form, the term column space simply refers to the span of the vectors on the left. So the span of the vectors on the left, think of them as columns, is called the column space. So we know that a system has a solution if the right hand side is in the span of these vectors. So according to the new terminology, this solution, this system, excuse me, will have a solution if the right hand side is in the column space of the vectors on the left. Or you can call it the column space of the system. So that's the column space. It is denoted by a somewhat unexpected letter R. R stands for range, because you can think of the column space as the range of this expression. The term range, with respect to a function, usually refers to the values that the function can attain. So you can think of the column space as the range of this function of x, y, z, and t. That's just explaining the letter R. So the column space is nothing but a span. It's a term that you're already familiar with. It's just that we need a new word for the context of linear systems. The next term is the null space. The null space is denoted by the letter N, and you're already familiar with this concept. The null space is a subspace of Rn, in this case R4, that corresponds to the linear combinations of these vectors that yield the zero vector. So in the context of linear systems, the null space means the exact same thing, but with respect to these four vectors. So that's the null space. If you don't remember what the null space is, then you should review the lesson on the null spaces. So the column space and the null space are the bread and butter of linear systems. Finally, I would like to present the new way in which we'll write the linear systems. We will never write them in this form, and we will actually never write them in this decomposition form, although we'll continue to think of linear systems as problems in decomposition. Instead, we'll adopt this notation with a razor-sharp focus on the coefficients, because after all, this linear system is not so much about the letters and the names of the variables as it is about the interplay and the relationships among the coefficients. So this form, where the coefficients are put together into a single matrix. Matrix is a table of numbers. And the variables are organized vertically, which is a little bit counterintuitive. But when you get used to it, you'll think of this way as very natural. And finally, the vector on the right-hand side appears as it did before in the decomposition form. So this form means exactly this. For now, you should think of this form as just a different way of stating the decomposition problem, a different, more effective way, and more space-efficient way of stating the decomposition problem. So when you're looking at this, you should perhaps for a short while at least visualize this. Later on, we'll introduce matrix multiplication, and we will interpret this notation as a matrix product, and this whole equation as a matrix equation. That will actually be very exciting, but it's not going to happen in this chapter, but it will happen soon. So let's now solve a whole lot of linear systems.